Hey, this is the Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 230. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. Today we're going to continue the arc of the Kaldheim Commanders by talking about Halvar, God of Battle. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? A whole ton is going down. We're in a, some new digs today. We've got all sorts of stuff to talk about. We have beers. Mm-hmm. We have a deck. We have stories to tell, patrons to thank. But before we get to any of that, we have to thank our official business daddy, FusionGamingOnline.com, their source for all your gaming needs. Very much so. And we've got some new stuff coming from Fusion. We've got a foil obeka from for you that I just gave you. I don't I don't know. You probably sat on it and bent it worse than I did, which was unbending it because it's it's foil curled. He's going to get it. The, you've got Studio CCO special today. And we can jump around, we can drink beer, we can show off some obekas. It's actually minty. It's not uh, it's not uh faded and stuff yeah which is my first non-faded obeka i'm very excited yeah very much so and we hope that uh the rest of call time and future sets are going to also be not faded the point is here cco fusion five promo code get you five percent off all of your stuff that you get from fusion your sleeves your gaming supplies all your gaming needs including your foil obekas uh, this did come from from Fusion. Oh, there. There, you, there it is. It's how it is. There it is. That's fun. If you're not watching on YouTube, you're like, what are they talking about? But here we are. Yeah. And you could watch on YouTube. It's fun. Very much so. And if you're a new sub on YouTube, big thanks. If you're not a sub on YouTube, just get with it. You're already listening to us. <laughs> like, you might as well subscribe. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> oh, that's it. Well, I think, I think the people that click on the video but then aren't subscribed are the people that, like, drop after fucking two seconds of the video <laughs> going live and they're like what the fuck are these long hairs doing who are doing? these idiots yeah so we're in stu- studio cco today we're drinking beer we've got halvar let me bring it up here halvar god of battle yeah if you guessed that you're gonna get a pack from the dirty onion sack of packs to crack yeah that's right and you know what we still didn't pick a winner so we're in Studio CCO. We have beer. We had a little hiccup there with the dirty <laughs> onion sack of packs to crack. It was winner. stinking up a storm. <laughs> yeah, we we're the worst, but we do have a winner, and it is Callum Stonehouse. There it is, Callum he, guest Sir Rolf Realmeter. And I kept forgetting that we even did Sir Rolf Realmeter. I kept thinking it was the 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 chipmunk. Is that what he is? Squirrel. Squirrel. Whatever the hell. The little tree rodent that we did last week, but what it wasn't there, what we did. What if there was a... What if there was a squirrel? That would... Oh, man. You, can you imagine... Chippendale tribal. Oh, shit, yeah. You can interpret that any way you want. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if they did print a really good squirrel commander, but its type was chipmunk? <laughs> can you imagine how mad people All would be? All squirrels get plus one, plus one. <laughs> imagine if they did that. And then people just started reacting to it. I'll bet you it would sound something like if they started printing more snake people and then called them fucking Nagas. Mm. Or they printed really nice commander playable exclusive cards and then they needed to be stored in Pringles containers. <laughs> <laughs> or they said white was going to be good and then <clears throat> it fucking wasn't. It's fine. It's yeah. Fun. It's a great support color. I play it with lots of other things. Yeah, no, right. it's it's totally fine. And it's, speaking of great and support, we've got some Patreon shoutouts. Oh, shit. Yeah, that is a yeah, segue, dude. I segued. Way. I segued. I'm not sure what the proper... Remember the other day when we were talking about what's your thing? Like, me, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Ryan were talking about, like, what's a thing that, like, you do that you're like, ah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a thing I do. But other people are like, damn, you're something. Really, you're fucking good at that. Something of reverence. Ryan couldn't think of a thing. Fucking segues. <laughs> it's a superpower. Right? He's the king of the segue. I'm telling you. That's it. That's it. Well, we've got some other business, but let's take care of the patrons first. Because without them going to patreon.com slash CCO podcast, finding a reward tier, becoming part of CCO Nation, getting on the Discord, submitting decks that we will look at. Like this one today, this one actually came from our jank deck list 
channel. Not that it is jank, even though Brando kind of thinks it is. I think it's the kind well, of deck you just have to you just have to change how you play a little bit. What? I'm blaming you for everything today. Be, what the, I'm blaming what? you for fucking everything. Dude, we were just and that's the bottom line. We were just talking about a Taralf deck. I put a Jeet in because I forgot how Jeet works. <laughs> And and I'm the one that hates Jank? Well, that's why I'm blaming you. You don't even know how Jeet works. It's true. <laughs> it's it's true. One of the, hey, top five best equipments of all time. I will fight somebody because of that. Wait, wait. So would you. I think that people, I think that you think Jeet's top five best equipment of all time too, right? Probably, yeah. People don't think that. Why? Because they're not as smart as you and I and everybody in CCO Nation and our new patrons. You just blew my mind, I just dude. segued again. We're trying to talk about patrons, and you're blowing my mind. With people that don't think Jeet is top... Maybe not the best of all time, but certainly top five. What the... What? What the ass? I need to know... My ass and my balls, as you say. <laughs> right? I need to know what five equipments are better than Jeet. I need somebody to explain that to me too sweet. Well, you know what? Some of those it's equipments... It's Roach, isn't it? Oh yeah, 100%. it's Dana Roach that thinks Jeet isn't in the top. Probably not even top ten for Dana Roach. I got a, I got a future segue, dude. I'm telling you, you're right. You're right. We, when I'm right, I'm right. Some of those equipment that people are saying are better than Jeet are in the deck. <gasps> but before we get there, Ooh. before we get there, we've got some Patreons to thank. The first of which is an increase. Okay, all right. Who all right. didn't have a nickname? Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so he's going to get the best of both worlds. Oh, he probably became a patron the first time, or they became a patron the first time, and were like, oh, I'm going to get the sweetest nickname, and then they didn't get one, like, oh, and then, I understand. Let's do it. Let's this do it. is longtime supporter of the show, good friend of mine. He's got me to paint a bunch of cards from him, of his, Christopher Campbell. What? Yeah, kind of a little bit sounds like a Western bad guy, kind of a little bit sounds like a can of soup. I'm not yeah. sure where you can take that. Christopher Can of Soup. Christopher, Christopher Can of Soup? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah, I just kind of like that. There it is. Oh, Christopher oh, Can of I Soup. I bet you he's never heard that before, but he, you know what? I haven't, so I fucking like yeah, it. Yeah, I'll bet you he hasn't. He probably hasn't. It wasn't like, yo, chicken noodle, what's up, man? That's probably what oh. they call him. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Christopher Chicken Noodle, Christopher Limp Noodle, whatever, oh, the, whatever the, it is. There it yep. is. Yep, 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 yep. Christopher Soup Can Soup Can Limp Noodle. Oh, Chris, Christopher. Because it's, it's big, but it can't get hard. Cri oh, what a tease. Christopher, two cans of soup stacked on top of each other. Limp Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would normally say welcome, but you're already here. <laughs> so just F you. <laughs> F you, bud. It's, it's true. Okay. Next, new patron. Brandon Jenkins. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay. Pseudo-celebrity owner of Canadian Tire, a, a Canadian hardware and automotive store, Malcolm Jenkins' brother. Nobody's ever thought that. There's not a single person listening or watching this that that think, thinks that. I've well, never heard that word before in my entire life. Well, Brandon Jenkins is probably fucking thinking that. Because he's the guy's brother? Yeah. Well... Maybe. He also might be Brando Jenkins because he's just trying to copy oh, me. Yes. Oh, he's not Jenkins. He's Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah. Yes. Brandon Jank. Yeah. Just Jank is fucking dank. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Yeah. See? Okay. Brandon Jank. There it is. I actually liked it. That's 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 a good one. That's a that's a classic. Welcome aboard, sir. Instant classic. Okay, final one. We had a Brandon. Okay. It's no coincidence, or maybe it is, but we've got new patron supporter, Ryan White. we got a Brando and a Ryan. What the fuck? It's fucking bizarro us. Is this, is DDO happening now? Is it, are they invading our... Yes. I don't, I don't know how I feel about this, Ryan. No. No, this is like Christian Coalition Outreach. First they steal our email address, now they've infiltrated the show with people that are kind to stealing our names. What if, I'm yeah, into this. Brandon Jank and Ryan White are actually from... Christian Coalition Outreach. All the way back from like CCO episode one. Fuck. What the fuck? 230 weeks later, they're, they, they're, they're finally making their damn move. Scumbags. They probably want their damn Twitch stream 
Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. The the Christian Coalition outreach is trying to like get all of the addresses and like things that I've gotten that they can't get, like CCO on Reddit, CCO on Twitch, and like nowhere that we even have a CCO on Instagram. We're not even on some of these platforms, but we've got them. Right? CCO TikTok, CCO Podcast dot com. I thought about TikTok for a second, but then I realized I couldn't air guitar naked on it. Sounds like fuck TikTok. Well, could you put like a like could you put like a, a sock? No. Could, no, really? you can't even sock it. What do the red hot chili peppers do? When I lived in Calgary, here's a we're gonna give Brandon or Ryan White his nickname in a second. But mm. first, I'm gonna tell the story about when I was in Calgary. I knew a bunch of women and men who were in an exotic dancing field of business. Oh uh, yeah, I buy it, and I still know a few of them. And one of them recently started a TikTok account just because Ooh. she's on all those things and stuff. And she did a thing where she wore like a mask, like a just like a like a a Bella Clava mask. Yeah, yeah, like a ski mask or whatever. Not only did they ban the video, they deleted her entire account. Well, was she wearing only a mask? No, no, oh. she had clothes on, mask, and then they deleted her account, the whole thing, and banned her like IP address. And the reason they gave her was she was luring children. Oh, well, you don't want to do that. Anything with internet and children, just yeah, stay away from Yeah, just don't do that. So I'm just, CCO on TikTok, probably not going to happen. Because it's like, I might walk in there and be like, balls! And they'll just... <laughs> they'll just send a missile from space. Exactly. Hey, Elon Musk, yeah, there's a guy in Saskatoon. <laughs> Get him. Oh, man, I don't need those. They'll use that earthquake gun that they had in Under Siege 2. I know you haven't seen it. But they had an earthquake gun that can make earthquakes hit airplanes. That's real. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. That's some yeah. Land Before Time shit. Right? Yeah. That'd be a neat Sh- thing to have. Shout out movie. to anybody who knows what that movie is. Land Before Time? Well, anybody born after 1990 is not going to fucking know. Dude. They- They're going to know Land Before Time 16. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> they're still making Land Before Time. Like, how is the little Brontosaurus still a baby? Like, what the fuck's happening? He's 50. I have, I actually have a Littlefoot is his name. <clears throat> There's a Littlefoot McDonald's toy out, out there on our kid table <laughs> that my parents gave us when they moved. <laughs> <laughs> we've got, we've got a nickname we've got to give still. Ryan, Ryan White. Ryan White. Ryan Worst Color? Ryan Worst Color. Oh. <laughs> Ryan Nat One Color. <laughs> that was yesterday's hint. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, see, and that's like a, that's a callback. Yeah, there Callbacks it is. Callbacks are the big joke now if you... Would like to be funny. The callback. Oh, yeah, yeah we're ha- we'll have to work on that. But wow, yeah, no you need. could be king of the callback. I'll be king of the the, the, oh, the segue. That, that's a lot of pressure. But we're gonna do. It. We're gonna do. It. What, right. what else we got, Ryan? What else we well, got? Well, we've done the patron thank yous. Did it? Did the business daddy thank yous? Did that? We need to read our good old commandy. So we're gonna read them and then talk about some other stuff. Let's just let's just read them. Yeah, we've got a couple other notes. Okay, I'll, I'll give them a read here because i got a computer in front of me. This is Halvar God of Battle, a 4-4 God for White White 2. Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have DS. That is double strike. Fuck. Yeah, so that's you, really good. You equip him with a bug of bones, huh? And then all of a sudden he gets double strike. <clears throat> okay. At the beginning of each combat... Yeah? Yeah, yeah, all right. You may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature you control to target creature you control. Is it target or as many as you want? Just one or many? You attach target aura or equipment to a creature you control. So you target the aura or or equipment and you move it on to another creature, which means the creature you move it on to could be equipped with something like a lightning greaves because you're not targeting where it moves to. Oh, wow. Yeah. You target the actual equipment or the enchantment. I dig that. Now, the other couple little rider texts that you have to remember is that the aura or equipment already needs to be attached. The so it can't just be sitting on the ground. Yeah, the equipment needs to be attached. So it can't be like equip eight and you equip for free. No, it already needs to be attached. So this guy's kind of like a like a shitty stepdad with, with two kids where the kids are fighting over the toy. But like he waits for one of the kids to win before he fucking takes the toy and gives it back to somebody. He doesn't just pick up one off the floor and say, hey, you play with this and shut up. It's like, no, you give me this shit. Give this to yes, them. yes, 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 yes. Now, double-sided though. Ugh. Yeah, MDFC, we've got a backside. The backside. So, so we've got a way of taking your commander out of the command zone, making them less good and no longer accessible to you. Is that what you're telling me? 
I don't understand. Well, because now you can't use... Halvar, God of Battle, we just explained. We can move around equipments and enchantments for free. We can give all of our creatures yeah, double strike. I, I think that we I think that we use the front side of this card primarily in this deck. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Because yeah. I, I got a fun story I want to tell about that. But The back side. Sword of the Realms. White 1 Legendary Artifact Equipment. Okay. All right. All right. Equip creature gets plus two plus O oh and has Vig. That sucks. That's fine. Whenever equip creature dies, return it to its owner's hand. That's like when the equip creature dies, draw a card, but it's the same card you just drew. Sort of, kind of breaking the rule of commander. Sort of. Con- well, I mean, you, it's not like you can equip the sword to your commander. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But, you know, but if the sword dies and you zone it, you could get your commander back. Which is, I mean, it's not, it's not anything special. That's just how Commander works. Yeah, that's how the that's that's the literal rules of the game. Yeah, so that's what we're playing. There's some nuance. There's some ways that we're gonna have to change and adjust how we think about like board states and how the game works to take advantage of like auto or or f- free equipping, even though we we have to pay for it. Moving, waiting for an opening, using a piece of removal, getting in, hitting somebody for. 10, 20. Several. Several. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. So let's check the show notes real quick. Make sure to tune into our Time Spiral remastered preview videos on March 2nd. Oh, yeah, we got those coming up. And they're good. You need to check that out. They actually sent us good shit again. I'm very excited. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I was surprised when I saw them. Like the first card I saw, I was like, oh, God damn it. Why did we get this crap? And you would even get the scroll down. Yeah. Man. And then you keep swiping. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Maybe Wizards actually smartened up and likes us now. They're going to send us bad boxes all the time. Make sure that we open all the shit. But maybe they're going to keep sending us good preview cards. Who can say? I don't know. The last thing I got to, that I do have to say, Uh-oh. because we, we always forget. This is from Daniel... Jackson, this deck. D-Jack. D-Jack in Discord and, and everywhere that we kind of know him. And uh, big thanks to D-Jack for sending the deck in. We're using it on the show. And uh, we, we do appreciate all the lists that do come into the preferred deck list channel. That's the first place we go on the Discord. It's a benefit to becoming a patron. But we go to the jank deck list. We go to commandercooker at gmail.com. And the occasional like Facebook message or Twitter message or whatever we get. Usually I respond with like... Like, email it to us so we can catalog it better. Yeah, and also that way I can look at it because I don't have a messenger on my phone <laughs> and I can't. You can, here's a totally off topic, but you can access those Russian dating mail order bride websites from the computers at my work, but you can't go on Facebook. Oh, yeah? Isn't that weird? Like, uh, the, the, the sites that are blocked are so strange. Like, Facebook? We have Facebook accounts for our show pages, and certain computers in the newsroom can't access the oh, fucking website. what the hell? Isn't that weird? Ah, yeah. That's so messed up, and I'm never on it at home, so if I can't get it on my phone... So email us their deck list is the point, because then I can see them too. Yeah. And then if I really like it, I'd be like, yo, Ryan, let's do this. And I poke them. Yes. And I'm like, yo, why aren't Not we Not a Facebook it? book, though, because you can't do that for yeah, I can't do that either, <laughs> but I do do the like real life, like physical, yo, god damn it, let's do this. Yeah, yeah very much so. Should we do the deck now? Let's do it. All right. All right. We'll, we'll start with the easy stuff. Sure. And we'll start with some instants and some sorceries, mostly removal because we're playing mono white. And what else are we going to do with our instants and sorceries, right? Yeah. Okay. We've got, let, let's start with a good one. Let's start with Akroma's Will. I think we both like this one. Yeah. This is choose one and you get both if you control your commander. Okay. So it's four drop. We're going to probably have both. And remember, commanderness is tied to the actual card in your command zone. So if you control the back side, the equipment, you still get to choose both with the will oh, cycle. I was just about to, te- to check that. Okay. Yeah, okay. So choose both is what this card says. Creatures you control gain flying, vigilance, double strike until end of turn. Jeez. And creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors until end of turn. Oh my, so it basically makes them unblockable killing machines. Yes. I, I'm, I'm a fan. Very much so. And just just unblockable killing machine also is open the armory, which lets us search for an equipment, reveal it, put it into our hand. We're going to search for one of the equipments that we have that's going to beat face. We have some situational ones, and having the situational one in our hand is never going to hurt us. That's right. 
and then we're playing uh, Swords and Path. We all know Swords and Path. Yep. We could probably lump Return to Dust in there as well. Generous Gift, Forsake the Worldly. Frantic Salvage? Frantic Salvage is an, uh, uh, is, is another like equipment kind of tutor, getter, backer. Put any number of target artifact cards from your graveyard on the top of your library, then draw a card. So you would usually put two, I would guess, right? You get the one that you want right now. And then you get maybe, if you have a utility thing, to get back, right? Yeah, That's yeah. That's how I would handle that? Or, if the deck played a different kind of tutor, like put an enchantment on top of your library, for example, you could just put zero artifacts, then draw a card. Or if you're digging for a removal because you're going to die, oh, I need my path, I have one chance, right? Frantic Salvage, put zero back, draw a card, path to exile, oh, fucking dead. And, and that's, a, that's a story that we would tell here on the show. Yes. If you have that happen to you, you got to email us and say, hey, yo, this happened to me. And tweet we'll, at we'll us, we'll tweet at us, at CCO yeah. Podcast, at CCO Brando. That works too. We also have a disenchant, everybody knows disenchant. Yep. And then the last one is crush contraband, which is sort of the same thing, but different. Yeah, choose one or both. It's four mana and you can get an artifact and an enchantment if you wish. So people talk about... White being the shits. This is one of my favorite moments in time where I get to dunk on my least favorite color, white, while at the same time pumping the tires of my favorite colors, red and green, because we have Hull Breach oh, over yeah. in Grawl, and that shit just costs two. Isn't that a sorcery, though? Doesn't matter. Ah, it does. It <laughs> only matters if you don't plan your turns properly. I suppose, yeah, well... Let's look at some sorceries. Well, you know what? I, I mentioned the open the armory. That's right. the that's the tutor. And then we've got a cleansing nova and a wrath of God. Those are sweepers. Cleansing nova lets you choose, destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Now, why are we... Pl- I, I actually stopped and thought about this as we were playing, as I was looking through the list. Why are we playing cleansing nova instead of... Uh, is it... F- not fumigate. The one that just kills all non-white things. Because we're never going to pick... Salt Blast? No, that's not it. We're never going to pick Kill All Artifacts and Enchantments in this deck because we need ours. So... Salt Blast is the six mana destroy target permanent, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. That's a bad card. So so why aren't we... There's just such a... There's a plethora of other mono white sweepers that we could play instead of this one that either cost less or maybe... Do the same thing. Like, the, what's the one where you choose one creature? I, you can choose your suited up badass Voltron creature and kill all the rest of them. Yeah, or something, right. You know what? That one. That one doesn't get that one blocker out of the way, yeah. right? And if our equipment gives us indestructible, then we can pick something else, and we get to keep two things, but they still have a blocker. I like Austere Command here. It costs it costs six instead of five, but Austere Command is going to let us get a big creature or a little creature. The opposite of what we have. Right. We'll pick the thing that doesn't kill our suited up guy. We'll pick enchantments maybe. Yeah. Or if our guy's indestructible, we'll just get all creatures and we'll crash in. Solid move. Yeah, I and, like and that. not destroy any artifacts or enchantments because we'll hit them for 20 or whatever. Yeah, I'm into that. Good call. Yeah. I like Smart it. move. Okay, one planeswalker in the deck. And it is Nahiri the Lithomancer. I actually like this card, but she does have a novel of text, so bear with me. She's a three loyalty, mono white. White, white three is her Nahiri type. Plus two, you get a one, one white core soldier creature token onto the B, and you can attach equi- an, an equipment you control to her for free. The, the, the token, which is cool. Minus two, put an equipment card from your hand. Or Graveyard into play. I like that one. I like Hand or Graveyard. That's pretty cool. Or minus 10, if you can get there. Put a colorless equipment artifact token named Stoneforged Blade onto the battlefield. It has Indestructible and Equipped Creature has plus 5, plus 5, and Double Strike and Equip 0. I think that you're there for the plus 2 and the minus 2 is what this is here for. Yeah. I don't think you need that. Stoneforged Blade. I don't think at any point you're ever going to just wait, oh, I wish I had a Stoneforged Blade. I think there's enough good equipment in out there now that you don't even need that crap. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think like you you plus two and then attach an equipment you control to the core and then you move to combat and that equipment that you attached might have like a high equip cost. Your, your Halvar that you cast the turn prior to Nahiri re-equips it to something else, whatever you want, right? Not the one one, oh, the yeah. thing that's already suited up. Oh, I like that. You just have to change the way that you think about how white's giving you advantage. It's not going to say, draw a card right on the card. It's going to say, get this thing back. Do this other thing that's going to get you 
10 extra damage or kill all their shit but none of our stuff. Yeah, the, the, I don't know if many people know this. Maybe you don't even know it either, Ryan. But if they have 30 cards in their hand and zero life, you've won the game. Very much so. I, I think a lot of people forget that. And before that, if they've got 30 cards in hand... No blocks and no mana. <laughs> probably going to lose the game if we attack them, right? Right. That's it. Should we talk about some dudes that we're going to suit up? Some Creech? Some Creech. Creech it up. Okay, let us start alphabetically as you have them with Arden Intrepid Archaeologist. I just ran into this guy playing F.U. Lenny a little while oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may attach any number of Auron equipment you control to target permanent or player. So you just get it. You just, like... It's like Super R Commander. It's like Supermander. Why isn't this the commander? Because <laughs> <laughs> Double Strike, right? Oh, yeah. Double Strike. I think people underestimate how good Double Strike is. Even this deck, I think, underestimates how good double strike is because it undersells itself when we get to the equipment we're going to see that yeah but i think that people don't always think just how fucking good double strike is because it is really good and we'll get to that in a bit next creature is blade griff prototype when it deals combat damage to a player destroy target non-land permanent of that player's choice that one of your opponents controls okay so i hit you you get to choose something of F.U. Smitty's to blow up. That's fine. It's politically interesting, but I feel it really results in you as the controller of Blade Griff prototype getting just slapped. Yeah. Because if it, it was you, your thing that triggered, I'm going to hit you. If you're doing damage to me to hurt that other player, that other player is probably in a better position than either one of us. And now we're, you more than I, but we're both in deep shit at that point. And it's a 3-2 flyer for 5. Mm. Also, yeah, not the, not the greatest. It's fine. I'd run it. It destroys stuff. I would, I think I'm, I've never thought about it, but I think I'd play this card. I'd try it. And when it deals, it's combat damage. So if you give it double strike, you can get two things. How good is double strike? We just talked about that. Next creature is Danitha Cap. Capuchin Paragon. Yep. First strike, vigilance, lifelink. Auras and equipments cost one less to cast. Cool. Yeah, very good. Two, two for three. That's fine. Yeah, we know why she's in here. Dawning Priest. Two, two for three again. Whenever it deals damage to a player, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. And it's got morph. So you give your morpher double strike. And you flip it face up when it goes unblocked because it's a morpher. And boom, destroy two of your things. And it has double strike. So yeah, there it is. Therapeed. Unblockable. Neat. Okay. 1-1 one, one for 3 unblockable when it deals combat damage to a player. So remember, whatever the trigger is, double it. You may remove a counter from target permanent. That's fine. You remove two counters from a planeswalker, two plus ones, two poisons from yourself. We're, we're not permanents, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Sorry, the, just permanents. But stuff like this does, it does come in handy. Like, you, you look at Therapy and think, oh, it's a 1-1 one, one for 3. But the effect is not negligible, especially if it has double strikes. You're getting it twice. Yeah. How about Ironclad Slayer? Ooh, that sounds badass. Now it's a three it's a three X for colored and two. Based on our last week's conversation, I feel like this should come into play and make everybody sack a creature. Yeah. <laughs> what does yeah. it actually do, Ryan? When it enters the battlefield, you return an aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand. Well imagine that. It's a getter backer. Huh. It does the opposite instead of, of instead of a putter in her, it's a getter backer. <laughs> I see how it is. <laughs> That's right. That's fine, right? It gets your it gets it, your meat and potatoes back, right? No, I love this card in this deck. Yes. I absolutely love Kemba Ka Regent. Ooh, I love this baby. card. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a 2-2 two, two cra- cat creature toke for each equipment attached to Kemba Ka. Ooh. I really like that. Yeah. Now, remember, that's an upkeep trigger. Your attach your stuff with other cards in the deck is like combat triggers. So you miss this until the next turn. Remember that? It's a 2-4 for 3, so the the stats are fine, but it happens at a different time, so you can't stack triggers and stuff. This is a card that I've always really wanted to play in decks, but it just... it. It just doesn't make the cut sometimes. You know, I'm not equipment and enchantment heavy enough that I'm going to play Kembaka, especially as a general. But when I see people playing it, it always makes me happy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so so good on DJ for rocking it. We got a Knight of the White Orchid. I think we all know that one. You get a land if you have less land. 
which you probably will. We have a Leonin Abunus. Abunus? What the hell is that? Yeah, this is a good-ass card. This is a 2-5 for 4. Artifacts you control have hexproof. Important in this deck. <laughs> yes, we're, we have we have several of them. How about Loxodon Punisher? Oh, look at him. Wow. He's muscly and he's got all those swinging balls on chains. Anyways. Don't, go- don't Google that. No. 2-2 two, two for 4 again. Eesh, Jesus, man. Fucking 2-2s two, for 4 what, in this deck. What is white all about this 2 Jeez. Okay, continue. Gets plus 2, plus 2 for each equipment attached to it. So he's a he's going to be a 4-4 four, four for 4. And he's going to hit you for 8 plus whatever the equipment gives him. Plus whatever the equipment gives him because he's got double strike. Cool. So you put an equipment on him. He's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. Equipment gives him plus 1, plus 0. Oh. He's going to be a 5-4. He's going to hit you for 10. That's pretty good. That's fine. That's that's not bad. Now, I think that he should be that, what is it, Stone Hewer Giant? The one that just gets you equipment. But this is $0.35. Cents. That Giant is still quite a few dollars. Yeah. So I understand the 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 exclude of the, the other creature here. How about Precinct Captain? This is a first striker. 2-2 two, two for 2 first striker. When it deals combat damage to you, you get a 1-1 one, one soldier. So remember, double that, you get two soldiers. White card advantage. You're on the board right there. Play it alongside your austere command. Pick creatures with power 4 or greater or whatever. It's not going to die. You get to keep your shit. Swing in. Kill everybody. Yeah. There it is. See? Also play it with a... What, what is that other... The card that goes in all the white tokeny decks. Oh, yeah. Cathar's yeah. Crusade. Yes, Cathar's Crusade. That's, That's a bitter. Here's another card that is just sweet in this deck. Pure Steel Paladin. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Sick. Remember, we're playing several of them. And we're going to... There's a couple of cards in this deck that are so good with Pure Steel Paladin. Yeah. And it's got Metal Craft, so you've got to control three or more artifacts to turn on this ability but once it's on equipment you control have equip zero that is important yeah i like that one how about slith ascendant i'm a big fan of this card yeah old school look at reprinted in commander legends but originally from original mirrodin this is slith ascendant this is part of a cycle of common slith creatures too just just anybody who is interested (laughs) It's a 1-1 flyer for 3, typical of fucking white. When it deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. So you could double that with double strike. And yes. it has flying, so it's probably going to get in. Yes. Uh, it. I don't think it saw a ton of play back in the day, but Slith Firewalker sure did. Yeah. The, and the, the red one. And the black one did too. And you know what? This one kind of feels like Sun Scorch Regent, like... A, an opponent plays something, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Right. In this deck, this kind of reminds me of a mini Sun Scorch Regent, where it's just Ooh. like, oh, all of a sudden it's a 3-3, three, three, and then it's a 5-5, five, five, and then, and then, and then, right? Plus it's equipment, right? Everybody knew this guy's coming. It's SRAM. Yeah, you cast an aura an equipment or a vehicle, draw a card. There's a white card that says draw a card on it. That's a good-ass card in this deck. I'm just saying. Yep. How about Stonehaven Outfitter? Ooh, look at this. This is a little guy from, from Gate Crash or something, right? No, uh, from Oath of the Gate Watch. From A. It's A. Uh, yeah, the set symbol. Is that a proxy? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a core artificer ally. 2-2 two, two for 2. Equip creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. So cool. it's equipment lord. Yeah. Whenever an equipped creature you control dies, draw a card. Wait, wait. Read that last line again, Ryan? Draw a card. Oh, weird. And it's a white card. Yeah, it's funny. And, are we and, are we to the point where we can just tell people to shut up yet? Not quite. Okay, we'll get there. We're getting there close, though. We are fucking getting there. <laughs> I can't wait. And, and now there's no Skull Clamp in the deck. So, like, spoiler alert, it's not here. But it doesn't really work with Skull Clamp anyways because it gives plus one, plus one. They knew that. Yeah. But if you have a sack outlet, this guy and Skull Clamp... You like a if if you if you had like a Ashnod's altar or something, right? You can sack get the mana to re-equip your skull clamp, draw three. Ooh. Yes, <laughs> this guy this guy'll do some work. He is a solid card. And the last creature in the deck is the Weathered Wayfarer. That's search for a land if your opponents have more than you, right? Which you will. And on I mean, a creature. And at the end of the day, it's a one one. You can suit him up and get him over the wall. In the artifact suite, that's kind of where we're going. There's twenty six of them. We've got a soul ring that that's kind of the only real air quotes mana rock. So mostly all of the other twenty five of them are just gonna fucking smash. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's start with an actual smasher. Yeah, 
An actual smasher in Argentum armor. That is a six drop equipped for six or free with certain conditions met in the deck like other cards. Plus six, plus six. And when equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. The only thing that I wish that that said is when it deals damage. I like like when it attacks, actually. Yes. In this deck, when it deals damage is better. Yeah. But in general, I think when attacks is a better thing. Because you can just attack in and just nuke their blocker and be done with it. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, and it'll have double strike anyways because it's equipped. So you nuke their blocker before they block. And then you hit them twice. And you hit them for like 12. Yes. 14 or, yeah, it'll be at least 14. If you hit them with your commander, it would be... 20. 20. <laughs> <laughs> so literally any other equipment in the deck or that guy that gives plus one for equipped creature is an instant kill with Argentum armor. Here's my first, I'm going to say questionable equipment because I think this deck is playing a few. Okay. So let, let me hit you with it. Banshee's Blade. Banshee's Blade, originally from regular ass Mirrodin. Two drop equipment, equips for two. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Banshee's Blade. Okay. Whenever crypto creature deals combat damage... You put a charge counter on it. This is not the equipment I thought it was. Oh, okay. This one is good because it's double strike? Yeah, it's... it's Well, even without double strike, it's really good. Okay, this... Were we, were we this talking is, about Jeet earlier? Yes. Because same kind of rules apply, just less versatile. This is actually... Banshee's Blade is just like um, the Slith thing that we just talked about. Just gets bigger every time it hits you. It gets a plus one, plus one, plus one. Yeah. Except you've got a roundabout way of... A charge counter. And the charge counters will also stay with the equipment as well. So you can put it onto a little shitty core token. Oh, yeah, that's your fine. That's Nahiri, fine. and now you've got a giant dude. Hey, how come no Rune of White in this deck from Kaldheim? Because that'll give a pump, and it'll draw you a card, and you can enchant one of your equipment so you don't get two for one. We talked about this in CCO Top 5 in 5. Watch them on YouTube every second Friday. That was good. I like that. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. Take some notes. You got to start doing commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I love this equipment in this deck. Because we have, remember, whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Mm -hmm. We have a butt-forged battle axe. Ooh, yeah. Plus two, plus oh. And whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of butt-forged battle butt. Yeah. So you get two butts. Right? You get two butts. And in some cases, draw two cards. Two butts to have two in the butt. Do not Google any of that. And once you've equipped those two additional butts onto your dude with a butt, not only does you have three butts, but the next time he hits somebody, you're going to get six additional butts and draw six additional cards. To put in your butt. Yes. Because that's the only place you can keep them unless you want to discard them. Because you're going to have so many cards in mono white. There it is. Just throwing that out there. Your big white butt's going to have too many hands in it. (laughs) Next up, we have a card that I am convinced is not worth what you're paying for it monetarily. But Forge Battle Axe, 23 bucks. 23 butts. We just explained that it drew eight cards and two attacks. (laughs) That's a good-ass card, Ryan. Okay. Commander Plate. Commander's Plate. Yeah, this is... Oh, this is cool. I wish it was a little bit better to warrant the $17 that it is. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and has protection from each of its not commander's color identity. Yes. Did I say that right? Sure. Every color that your commander is not is the color that it has protection from. So it's it gets better, the air quotes, worse your commander is oh, i like that you know what i'm saying yeah, like okay. i think everybody gets that we're nuanced enough here in the nation yeah 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 equipped to commander three okay so three three plus three for three and protection from four colors it's yeah pretty good if you equip your commander if you equip something else it's five yeah now now, now it's bad n- notable remember you can steal somebody's like commander and then equip it to that that's still somebody's commander, even though it's not yours. <laughs> Just FYI. Anyways. Next up, we have another Kaldheim special in Gold Vein Pick. Oh, yeah. Gold Vein Pick. That sounds like a something dirty. Yeah, it kind of does. Plus one on a equipment for two. Equips for one. Whenever equipped creature deals damage, you get a treasure token. Maybe this is the reason that Smothering Tithe isn't in the deck. I still think it should be Smothering Tithe. Smothering Tithe is good. It'll probably get you three treasures per turn cycle. And you don't have to hit anybody. This one is deals combat damage to a player. That's right. If you do hit somebody, this will get you two treasures. Yes. I I just think that this deck does want Smothering Tithe, and we're going to get to why in a couple of cards. Yeah. 
but I, before we do, check this out though. Smothering tithe, like twenty seven bucks. Yeah, gold vein pick four fucking cents. <laughs> <laughs> And we can appreciate that, but we're not always a budget podcast here. Sometimes you just got to play those cards that are good. Yeah, I couldn't even buy that card in Canada. We don't have pennies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I well, can't you, give them four pennies. And if I gave them a nickel, they can't give me a penny back. You got to remember though, Ryan, that's four American cents. That's like eight bucks. Oh yeah. yeah. If you go to CCO Fusion 5 on, on FusionGamingOnline.com, you'd, right. you'd save like $87. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gold vein pick. Put it in your deck. <laughs> How about grafted exoskeleton? Oh. We probably saw this one coming. Fuck, hey. dude. This is an instant kill, right? Yeah. Double strike. So plus two and infect. If if it unequips, it dies. But maybe you do want to move it to kill a creature. I don't know. That's happened before, right? Sure. Unequip with a blood artist in play to kill your opponent who's at one, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, plus two makes your commander a four or a six six with double strike and infect. Instant kill. That'll get you there. There it is. How about Inquisitor's Flail? Gives creature double damage and doubles damage that would be dealt to equipped creature. It basically makes that creature a little self-contained Furnace of Wrath. Yeah, in this deck though, more than that, because we're going to try to eliminate blockers, it quadruple strikes your opponent. Yes. (laughs) Which is never a bad thing. And here's one of the things. One of the reasons Inquisitor's Flail sometimes is a risk is because your creature is going to eat shit too. When it attacks, if it gets blocked, right? Whereas if it has double strike, the odds of something being big enough to block it are small. Er. I like I like giving my commander plus two plus two, so it's a six six, and then double striking to twelve and then doubling that to twenty-four. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's that nobody's gonna shake a stick at that. Yeah. Or a flail. They're they're gonna shake all their removal at it, maybe so. <laughs> maybe, yeah. How about mask of memory? Creature deals damage. You may draw two cards and then discard a card. So that's draw four, discard two. Cool. In white. You're going to discard with that card. Like, down to fucking hand size, I bet you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's a card that I really, really like in this deck because it gets us around the commander backside problem. Oh, yeah. With masterwork of ingenuity. Enters the battlefield as a copy of an equipment on the battlefield. So you play your god of battle as the sword. You masterwork of ingenuity it. So now you have the sword, but it's legendary. So that kills your commander back to the zone. And now you can play him again. And now you have on the, the front sword side. and the commander. So we he would be a 6-4 double strike vigilance. When it dies, we get it back. Yes. Sick. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And that, and again, this one we just we just always cast him on his commander side if we have the sword because that avoids command tax. Yeah, it's and that's pretty sick because your commander is going to be kind of a removal magnet in this deck, and that's a very situational, granted, way of getting around that. Very cool. How about Prowler's Helm? Can't be blocked except by walls. We can do better than that. I think it's fine. And we're going to get to that in a sec. Prying Blade. Plus one, plus oh. Equipped creature deals combat damage. You get a treasure, so you get two. It's fine. Quiet a spike. Ooh, death touch and half your life. But half your life, then half your life again. Because yeah, so double you, strike. If they're at 40, you get hit for six. Then they lose whatever half of 34 is. Then you hit them again for six. And then they lose whatever half of half of 34 minus 6 is. Yeah. If there's no other equipment, you'd hit them for 4. And then 4 again. No, you'd hit them for 4. Then they'd lose half their life. So they'd go from 36 to... 18. 18. Then you hit them for 4. They'd go to... 6. S- then they go to 6. Is it 6? Yeah. Is that the math? I think so. Sure. 6 or 8. Something. Or 7. Fucking single digits. Yeah, they're, they're, they're having a fucking bad day now. The, they're Brando's... Turn four Earthquake away from death. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) How about Rogue's Gloves? Draw card, right, when it hits you, so draw two. Yep. Scythe Claw. Ooh, Living Weapon. So this is automatically just going to equip, right? And then we can move it during combat if we want. I like Living Weapon in this this guy's deck. Just because we get around all such equip costs, right? How come no Batter Skizzy? Well, it's this... This should probably be a batter skull instead of a scythe claw. Okay. Well, again, look at the look at the price tag, right? Thirteen yeah. cents. Yes. And living weapon means it enters the battlefield and you attach it to an, a, a zero zero germ. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A creature gets plus one plus one, so the germ would become a one one. Right. 
And whenever a crypt creature deals combat damage to a player, they lose half their life. So it's shitty quiet a spike. Shitty quiet a spike that actually gives you a buff. So it puts them even lower. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How about skeleton key? Ooh, skulk. <laughs> Fucking skulk. Can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. In this deck, I don't know if that's what you want. A quick creature also uh, hits you, you draw a card. So you put yeah. on one of those 1-1 one, one soldiers that you got, you draw two cards. Yeah, that's what that's for. It's not for your big hammer and beater. Yeah. They're going to be so freaking big. Yeah, this would be in the card draw section for on your little shitty token guy. Sure. How about Spellbinder? Spellbinder? This is from Darksteel of old. This is old school. Ron Spencer, even artist. This has got imprint. When it enters the battlefield, you may remove an instant card from your hand. Like, you exile it. Yep. From your hand. When a crypt creature deals combat damage to a player, copy the imprinted spell and cast it without paying its mana cost. So you copy it and then cast it. So you are casting it. It works the same way as Isochron Scepter. Yeah. Okay. What do we copy? Like like a swords or a path or like a disenchant? Sure. I think I don't think that we have the kind of abusable instants and sorceries in this deck that maybe we'd want. But I mean, if you had an I guess Enlightened Tutor is a bad example. But I feel like White might have instants maybe that don't fit into this deck that would fit better into a Spellbinder package. But don't be saying bad shit about Path to Exile or Swords so, to Plowshares. Right? Yeah, like, like if I put a if I put a Path to Exile on my Spellbinder, you just never have a fucking blocker. Yeah. And you have lots of land, sure, and that's maybe that's better than a blocker. But newsflash, if I hit you for 12 infect because you didn't have a blocker, I don't give a fuck how many lands you have. Yeah, you're you're dead. Yeah. You have 45 land and 30 cards in your hand, and you're dead. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter. How about stratocide? That imprints a basic land, and then equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each land of the same name exiled. Technically, it's any land, but... In EDH, it's basic land. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So we exile a planes, and then our guy gets plus eight, plus eight. We have a sword suite. Yep. We have sword of body and mind, feast and famine, fire and ice, sinew and steel. They're great among the best equipments in the game. You fucking play them. We, you could probably dump body and mind for light and shadow, because we get the graveyard getter backer ability of light and shadow. We don't want our guy to have pro white, though, right? Oh, yeah. Or do we have auras that give a shit? Would, I mean, with all the equipment we're playing, I think that it would be, it would behoove our business to give our creatures protection from two of the better remover colors in the format. Well, we do have an enchantment suite of nine cards, so we'll see yeah, we'll how see. many of those want to enchant our own creatures to see if we want any of the ones that give pro white. Because we don't have any of them, which is well, I think I think is the right call. Okay, that's what I think. We'll, we'll have we to see. How about Sword of the Animist? <laughs> when equipped creature attacks, you get a basic land into play tapped. Sure. Sure. Plus Tro one, plus one, probably not negligible. Trailblazer's boots. Unblockable, non-basic land walk. Jeet. You fucking jeet. Top jeet, five. Jeet. Top five. Equips for two, casts for two. When a crypt creature deals combat damage, so you get this fucking twice. To anything, either. If it's blocked and you hit the creature twice, you still get the counters on the jeet. On the jeet, which is important. Yes. Because if the creature dies, the jeet still has counters, and you don't need to have the jeet equipped for it to work. That's right. You can just be sitting there on the ground, and all of a sudden, poof, you're fucking dead. And there's some asshole out there right now thinking, jeet's not even top five, guys. <laughs> CCO, you're so pedestrian. Fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You remove a charge counter from jeet. Choose one. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So remember, we attack once, got double strike, it's got four counters on it. Remove all those, plus eight, plus eight. <laughs> Fuck, that makes our commander a 22-22 when he hits you? That's it's sure. negligible damage. Yeah. Negligible damage, Ryan. Okay, you could also give minus one, minus one to target creature until end of turn. And, I mean, when is that ever going to be good? Yeah, well, if you remove four, you can give you can kill like a four four. Right. Yeah, get blockers out of the way, or just wait. We're not fucking done. Gain two life, which is like the worst mode. But if you gain life in chunks of eight every single turn, it's 
going to make you hard to kill. That's that's fine. Because people aren't going to care about that. And then all of a sudden they're going to ask you and they're like, what are you at? And you're like, I don't know, 96. <laughs> like, what the fuck? How did that happen? It's like, yeah. I have a Jeep, you asshole. Like, yeah, what the hell? Exactly. I have like the 10th best equipment of all time. <laughs> <laughs> How about Whisper Silk Cloak? Unblockable and Shroud. Let's check out these these enchantments. Okay, last section of the deck. No custom fucking categories, I noticed, but uh, here we are. I feel like this is one of the few decks that we've looked at that doesn't really need them. All right. Right? Like, I think that they all kind of fit into the... We just make a really big artifact and enchantment list otherwise. Yeah. I, I feel like that's how that would work. Let's start with All That Glitters. All That Glitters. A couple weeks ago, we talked about Mask of Ancestry being plus two, plus two for each enchantment. This is similar, yet for less mana, and also counts uh, artifacts. This is why we want Smothering Tithe. Smothering Tithe gives us, let's say, three artifacts per round of the table minimum, if nobody pays. If right. they draw cards, they got to pay more or else we get more. It gives plus one for each artifact we control. or And or enchantment. Yeah. So the treasure tokens just make your dude bigger and... Again, I hate to harp on it. Smothering Tithe is a really good card in modern, in mono white. Yeah. Just, just play them if you got them. That's a good one. How about Armored Ascension? I like this card. Yes. Plus one, plus one, and flying for each planes you control. Nice. And the way that I read that is it continues to get flying again and again and again. <laughs> just flies higher and higher. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, you, if you're going to play this in a deck, you have to be real careful because if you're not playing the one from, I think it's Shadow Moor. You're going to look like a skid. So make sure you get that OG art. Yeah, sure. With, with the Kithkin with the laser wings, That's it's just what you want. <laughs> it's it's aesthetically perfect. If that actually Do. exists, Joe will put it on the screen for us. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Joe. How about Celestial Mantle? I actually think that this card is a little bit underrated. And the Battle Bond one, or sorry, the, the, the Jumpstart one comes up at default and people won't know what this card is. But it's originally from Zendikar. Yep. So, okay. Enchantment Aura, white, 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 three. Maybe that's why it doesn't see a whole ton of play. Yeah. All right. Equip creature gets plus three, plus three. Fine. So that makes our that makes our commander a seven, seven. And then the rest of it's just flavor text, right? No. Oh, whenever, there's more? Whenever equip creature deals combat damage to a player, double its controller's life total. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we're let's say we're at, let's say we're even at 30. Okay. We hit you for seven with our commander. Okay. We go to 60. We hit you again because double strike. We go to 120. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to come out and say it. I understand that this card is awesome. It's a great card. I hate this card. This is a challenging card. This card just makes me bitter every time I see it come into place. It's just irritating. This is gift of immortality. Yeah. And it's it's an enchantment or a... White two, enchant a creature, enchanted creature dies. You return the creature to play under its owner's control immediately. And then at end of turn, you reattach Gift of Immortality to it. Yes. So if you're going to kill the enchanted creature, you have to kill it Again. twice yeah. with very specific timing. And I just, I hate that. I understand the, oh, you know, the value, all that. But it's just. Fuck, I hate that. Or if you're going to use a removal spell that can get creature or enchantment, you got to get the gift of immortality and then just hope the creature will die in combat or whatever so it doesn't come back. Yeah. And regardless of what you do, you kind of need two pe- two pieces of removal. Or you got to make a pact with your team with another <laughs> creature. You, you got to like cut your hands and fucking high five and rub the blood together and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's just, fuck. I just got to touch tips. Right? Mm-hmm. And who wants to do that to kill? Uh, uh, wow, kill especially this day, right? Most of the creatures are all shitty in this deck. So it's like, oh, do I want to use two pieces of removal to kill that? Well, I guess I fucking have to. Yeah, I guess I have to sneeze into my friend's eyes so he fucking knows I'm serious. Right, it's, it's just terrible. Yeah. Hyena Umbra is next. Yeah, this is uh, enchantment again. Plus one, plus one, first strike, and totem armor. So if a creature is going to die or gets destroyed, it does not die. It is not destroyed. You take all damage off of it. You know what else stops things from getting destroyed? What is it? Indestructibility. Our next enchantment? Yes. You're taking a page out of my segue book? That's right. I'm learning. I'm learning from the master. (laughs) Yeah, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Four drop, enchantment, enchant permanent, so you can get anything. You can get your land. You can get your equipment that's real good. Yep. Enchanted creature has... indestructible 
Full, that is all. Full stop. That is that is the end of the card. Shielded by faith. Yeah, enchant creature. It's indestructible, so less mana, but can only get creatures. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you can attach Shielded by Faith to it, so you can switch it. I like this card. I like cards that have that the the equipments that have that. If you equip something better, you can move. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You can you can upgrade what it's on. Yeah, I just like uh, what's the what's the the O ring passive prison term. Yes, that does the same thing where you can enchant your opponent's creature to like make it suck. Yep. And then if, if they, they put twist, something better, just make it suck instead. Yeah, I like Shielded by Faith because you can move it to something better and then go to combat and move it to whatever's attacking with your commander. Oh, yeah. And then you can play something maybe post-combat and move it fucking back. You can always get it on what's attacking and then move it back once you cast something new. I'm into that. How about Sigarda's Aid? Yeah, we should have covered this one in the in the tutor, I think, right? Meh. Uh, uh, maybe it's not a tutor. I can never remember what this card does. It's an enchantment for white when you cast an Aura and equipment spell as though they had flash. Yeah. It gives them flash speed, and whenever an equipment enters a battlefield under your control, you auto equip it. So picture that with that butt forged battle axe we were talking about earlier. Or the Argentum armor that you don't have to pay six for anymore. Let's look at the butt forged battle axe. Oh, you du- make, yeah, you make copies of it. It's got double strike, so it attacks in, hits for three or four or whatever. Then you make another one, and it just attaches to the other guy. And then you hit him again. And you make two more. And you make two more. And they attach to that creature too. Or they attach to another one of your creatures that's going to block. Oh, fuck. Why can't we fling in this deck? (laughs) Oh, baby. And the last card in the deck is Spirit Mantle. This is a two-drop enchantment, enchant creature. And enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has protection from Creech. Sick. Yes. That's the deck. I think there's, like you heard us talk about, a bunch of nuance. There are some lands of note, though. We've got a Buried Ruin, which lets us get an artifact back from our, our graveyard to our hand. Important in a deck like this. And a Mary of the Sky Ruin that lets us get a creature back from our graveyard to the battlefield if we have seven planes. If you ever had that work, tweet at one of us and let us know what your opponents did wrong that allowed that to actually happen. Sure, yeah. <laughs> A Rogue's Passage, which for four and tap makes a creature unblockable. Fabulous in this deck. Yes, very much so, because we're going to kill someone. And a War Room, new one. This is actually a Dana Roach special, and I do like this card. This is a good card. And I've talked with Dana on Twitter a bunch about this card, so I I, I like that we can say something good about him finally. (laughs) Which is, yeah, it's like the first thing. What do we dunk on him? Why can't we go back to dunking on Max? Well, uh, they're basically the same person. When you think about it. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Well, let's give War Room a read. This is tap for a colorless or three tap, pay life equal to the amount of colors in your commander's color identity. So one. one. And draw a card. Who was that a bigger dunk on, Dana or Max? I don't know. That's Let fine. us know in the comments, yeah? Who did we <laughs> dunk on harder there, Dana or Max? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only, there's 30 planes here. I think a, what's the the white artifact land could go in this deck? Yes, it would. Ancient Den. Yes, it would, on the off chance that somebody blows it up, like, yeah, that sucks. But I think that you have more chances of it probably just benefiting you. Because everybody knows that it's not there for anything other than those two equipments. I think people will probably leave it alone. And all the glitters. Truth, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay, so that's that's potentially an extra three damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> but you're not losing anything by playing it. That's right. So play it if you got it. So when we when we... When we look at the deck as a whole, 311 bucks, we, sure. we could make that probably $350 with the Smothering Tithe, or we could take $142 out of it if we remove the Jeet and the, the Four Swords. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. If you're going to build an equipment-based commander deck, I think that it behooves your business to lean heavy on the swords. Like I just, think so, too. If you have them, play them. If you love the deck trade for them. I think that it's worth taking time out of your your day and money out of your magic budget to acquiring those swords because you're always going to find a place for them and in decks like this, they're not required, but they're really fucking good. Yep, and the only thing that you have to worry about is making sure that the thing that you're equipping to doesn't have protection protection from the color that you want to further enchant it with. Yes. We saw we saw like the 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 nine enchantments, we saw probably seven or so or eight of them that that we'd want to be careful with. Strengths and weaknesses. Strengths and weaknesses. Okay. White. 
People say that there's a lack of card draw card advantage. Have we debunked that with this deck? Yes. Okay. So maybe not a strength unless you're thinking of playing the deck in a traditional kind of hold up mana, draw go type aggro is bad mindset. Right. Okay. Well, if that's the deck that you don't like playing, this isn't the deck for you. Correct. But I like decks like this because I can sit back, hold up my removal. When I see an opening, fucking go all in. Absolutely. If and you want to, like, oh, there's some lips. Look at that. The lip is pouting because something bad happened to them. I think I'll go over there and slap them off. Slap them on to the back of their head. They flew off so hard they fucking went into orbit and they crashed down like a comet back onto the back of their own butt cheeks. Exactly. They're kissing yep. their own ass now. Yeah. Their lips you slapped off. Hell yeah. I like that. Yep. Okay. Issues with sweepers and or removal if we talk about like a Voltron or a aggro deck. I was going to say that this deck is, it, it bends to removal as any Voltron equipment based deck will, but also it's kind of light on removal. And while people have said, maybe white isn't the color of removal, white does have some good fucking removal. The best removal. And we're not playing a lot of it we got I, a few but I, like, I think we could have more i like the suite it's like double digits it's 10 removal spells or whatever i like austere command in the deck yeah i, I think th- that should be here there just should be more ways i think to deal with creatures you want to kill the blockers more than their shitty enchantments okay just pay the mana for their ghostly prison you don't need to destroy it just pay two and hit them for 25 just oh, do that yeah fucking sweet 25 okay strengths strength we talked about it already a little bit it's going to slap lips. Yes. Stomp dinks into the dirt. Hell yeah. It's going to beat wholesale amounts of ass. Absolutely. Blue plate special on ass beating. Yes, yes. These are the Costco reject cards that go to the bulk discount fucking warehouse next door. And I go and buy them and I'm going to fucking slap you upside with them. <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay, cool. It, we just a little bit talked about the removal, but I, I want to go back to it. It does... Still play some of the best cards in the format. Oh, it certainly The does. removal, the swords, fucking jeet. <laughs> yeah, swords, jeet, path, sword. It, it, there's so much good stuff in the deck. And while there is good stuff that isn't in the deck that could be, the good stuff that is there isn't made less good. <laughs> yeah. And I like to highlight, even though this isn't in the notes, it does encourage you to think about how to play a little bit different. And it does encourage the bold. It does encourage the bold plays. The plays that say, well, if you have it, you have it. I got to go all in. Mm -hmm. And lots of the time, there's three other opponents. And and the opponent that you're going all in on might not fucking have it. And hey, and maybe if they do, maybe one of your opponents doesn't like that they have it. And they'll counter it for you. Counterspell your removal spell so you die. Yeah. (laughs) Just so you can steal the kill, right? It's like, I'm going to kill steal you, motherfucker. Like... Do oh, it. kill steal. Yeah, man. I like that. Because I definitely take the credit for a, a kill if I have some way, in some way, in any way, as a matter of fact, precipitated that kill. Very or excellent. facilitated. You, you very I, much do. I'm counting that as a win, you say? Yep. Yeah. That's how I say it. Okay. Spice Calc. Spice Calculator. Popularity on EDH Rec. Mm-hmm. 57th among mono white commandies. Oh, my God. Now, we're doing the Ark of Kaldheim commanders. All of these commanders are new. But when you look at the commanders on either side, Linvala, Keeper of Silence, that's fine. It's it's kind of like Null Rod, right? It's okay. And what even is that? Radiant Ra- Archangel doesn't even have a name. Is that from? It's from Urza. What does that even do? Three three for five flyer counts as an angel. <laughs> is written in the what is happening? Attacking does not, so it's Vig, yeah. before they called it Vigilance, and it gets plus one, plus one for each other creature with flying in play. Um, <clears throat> it only beats that up by two decks. I have died to a Radiant Archangel. <laughs> <laughs> Was it the commander, though? Yes. Oh, no. You're fired. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm fired oh. on my own show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it. That's where we are. We got an average CMC in this deck. Get this, two point seven seven. That's that's pretty good because all the equipment and the removal is like real low, right? If you were to just look at that, you'd be like, "Oh, this is some CDH shit that's some going on." Serious shit. Why aren't we playing SRAM in this deck as the commander, <laughs> right? One tutor that we could find, and a uniqueness rating that is cards different than the stock list on EDH Rec of eighteen. Ooh. Oh, it's not. What? It's a new deck, and it. It's one of those cards that unfortunately does have the, it tells you what to do with the card, 
right on the card. Yeah. And, I mean, like, we were talking about swords and, and we, all the good equipment. There's only so many. You want to do the best thing that is available when it tells you what the thing is. Yeah. And white fucking needs to do the best thing. Yes, it does. <laughs> so you punch it all into the spice calculator. You get a 35.6. Ooh. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, yeah, actually. I thought, I thought it was going to be worse than that, actually. But we did it. We are above the 20 test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we passed the 20 test, we which, passed is, a, the 20 test. which yeah. is probably failure around here, but well, we did it. And you know what? Here's the thing is when when you sit down and play and it's a mono white and it's like, okay, fine. There's only 22 of this list on EDHREC.com. You're not going to see this deck very often. And yeah. while you're going to kind of know what it's going to do when it sits down, you're not going to see it very often. So it's going to be fine and cool. And it's probably going to slap the lips off of one person a lot fucking harder than everybody else <laughs> thought it was going to, right? Right? Yes. So, I forgot to mention this actually during our weaknesses section because I was talking about how good Double Strike is and how underrated and just underseen Double Strike is. Okay. There are so few equipments in this deck that give Trample. Trampski! And Trample and Double Strike is so... Fucking good. Yeah, because regardless of whether they block or not, the excess damage is going to get through. Like You want to see somebody just eat a bowl of shit. A give bowl. Some, <laughs> give something a really high power and then slap a Loxon on Warhammer on it. Oh, yeah. I and like just one. watch the... like. They'll bleed in real life. <laughs> they will, like Their nose will actually break when you hit them. There'll be blood coming out of orifices that they didn't even know they had. Right? Like, you ever seen their, somebody just... Their deck will bleed. Yeah. They're, it'll just fall over dead. It yes. will wither. The sleeves will just rip and the cards will fall on the floor all crimped. Well, they might actually... Their deck might fall over if it's got Commander Legends foils in it where it just kind of yeah. tips over. <laughs> <laughs> it won't matter, though, because when they hit the floor, the cards will be so faded you can't even tell what they are. So they can just put them back up on the table. Yes, yes, oh, yeah, very much so. Don't, dunk, dunk. don't play white or gray sleeves with your Commander Legends foils because you won't be able to know which is the front and which is the back <laughs> of the card. <laughs> you, won't know, you won't know if the sleeve actually has a card in it. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> but... The, that's important and something that I think you could do in this deck. If you don't want to do swords, put some trample enchantments in there. Yeah, very much so. So that's our little bit of a advice for D Jack. Thank you for sending the deck in. Big thank you to all of the Patreon supporters over at patreon.com slash CCO podcast. You guys make it all possible for us to be in the studio today. We, we hope that the sound quality is okay because we're using not the, the microphone as expensive as a car. We're using <laughs> the, uh, the much less expensive one. So we hope Brando can work some magic. I will. Uh, f- big thank you to Business Daddies and Final Thought of the Day. Big thanks to FusionGamingOnline.com. They help us keep all of the lights that we have in this room right now on so that we can keep bringing great, we hope, high quality, we hope, entertaining, <laughs> we hope, content to all of you guys out there who intake the show through your ear holes, your eye holes, and any other hole through which you intake the show. We appreciate all of you for being here, giving us a platform on which to talk about decks like this one, which I think is lots of fun. It's something that's a little bit more nuanced than people give it credit for. Oh, 100%. And it's a really fun kind of an interesting puzzle for you deck where you have to look at the equipment pieces that you have and figure out a way to win games with them because not all of them are just going to immediately make you smash over this wall of dudes and kill somebody. So you got to figure out a way to do it. And that's always fun. It makes you think. It makes the game interesting for you, even if what your opponents are doing is boring as shit. And you can always appreciate that. So thank you, DJack, for sending that in. Thank you for listening. And we are going to be back next week with another super fun Kaldheim Commander on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song!